Hey, what's up squad? It's TRG coming at you with another guide. Um, so I've been doing a lot of work with uh, DixieCoin Masternode setup guides and troubleshooting and writing scripts and writing uh, uh, Word documents to just make it as easy as possible to set up this Masternode. You literally only have to supply a, a few details um, that you'll get from the wallet and then other than that, everything is automated. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, let's jump into this. Okay, so first off, on the right-hand side here, we have the Word document that I've put together. I used some of the data from Zops uh, in the Discord, and he's the Masternode support individual um, for DixieCoin. So I used a little bit of his info, so props to him. And then the rest of this guide is most of the data that I've compiled and uh, gathered through troubleshooting and editing. So here we go. Uh, first off, you want to buy 1001 Dixie coins from Crypto Bridge. And I have the links here in, in the file and then a screenshot of basically uh, where you buy them, um, where you would uh, transfer them over and withdraw, all that, all that stuff is in there. And uh, I have the link here to download the Dixie coin wallet and you just select your platform that your wallet's for then you'll want to transfer your 1001 Dixie coins from Crypto Bridge to your local wallet and I have another screenshot here which shows how to withdraw your Dixie coins and after the transfer is complete um, we're ready to uh, transfer the 1000 Dixie coins to your new receiving address in your wallet so in your wallet you'll be able to create a new receiving address and that is the address that you will withdraw to. Um, for a lot of people this is really self-explanatory but for the new users that have never done this this really helps them out. So that's why I, I went really in depth here. So anyways uh, once that is all good to go and you've verified that you have your 1001 coins you're gonna go into the console window and enter masternode outputs and then you're going to mark down the transaction ID, the index ID, and then you'll run masternode gen key, mark down the gen key, and save all those details because you will need those details. Okay, guys? So this is what it looks like when you run the command masternode outputs. You'll get your transaction ID and your index ID. Save those. And then once you run masternode gen key, you'll copy that as well. So I highly suggest that you guys download this guide and then follow it step by step. And by the time you're done, everything should work. And I will have the link to this guide in the description of the video, along with the script that we will be using later to automatically install everything to the virtual private server. Okay, so let's, uh, let's proceed. So now that we have the 1001 coins uh, in your one address you want to transfer 1000 of those coins to another new receiving address and the reason why you do this is uh, the extra coin is for transaction fees and you need to make sure that exactly 1000 Dixie coins lands in your new receiving address that allows for the network to identify that wallet as a masternode wallet okay guys so uh, the next thing that you want to do is you want to edit your local masternode con config file and your Dixie coin config file okay so you can get to these by navigating to this folder location and adding in your uh, username or your computer name here wh where the red characters are and once you open that up you can edit the Dixie coin config file and add in these ta details exactly as they are okay then you're gonna wanna edit the masternode config file and you're gonna modify these details here so in our situation we're going to take this and we're just going to modify it so that is our IP address this is our port now we need our masternode gen key transaction ID and index key or index ID and we're going to get those in just one moment here okay so now that we've done our transaction we can go ahead and take a look at it so 
here is our transaction ID. Now what we want to do is we want to go to tools and we want to go to the debug console and I've already done my masternode gen key so here's my key right and we're just gonna save that over here in a separate file and we also want our masternode outputs so we're only gonna need one of the outputs I have multiple masternodes so I have multiple outputs but I know that uh, if you're setting up one you'll only have one output shown here I have four because I have four running okay so don't be confused by that um, we we only need one of them okay so I have the right one and I've copied it over here so here is our master node alias here is our IP address here is the proper port and here is our masternode gen key as we see in here and then we also have our transaction ID and our transaction index so it all maps up and we just want to save that to the side okay guys and if you look here it also matches up within the file here so I highly suggest that you guys take this template out of the uh, Word document and then you just copy your details over. Okay, so now I know that this is, this is the full line that I need and I'm just going to save this as uh, my masternode config file. So your masternode config file on your local PC should only look like this. Okay. Once you have that, you can save that and you're good to go. The next thing that you want to do is modify your DixieCoin uh, config file. And that should look exactly like this. Okay, guys? So here is my DixieCoin config file. The only, you'll just want to change your password to something more secure, obviously, than that. And then you're going to want to change your username and it's important to note that they cannot be the same don't make them the same okay Other, otherwise you'll lose functionality so I'm just going to cancel that because I've already done that and so now we have our masternode config and our DixieCoin config files good to go we can start configuring our VPS right also note that we have sent the 1000 coins and they are in within a separate uh, wallet locally so that's all good to go as well so the next thing we want to do is sign up on vulture and rent a virtual private server so I've already went through the process of doing that and now I'm at the point where I have my server up and it's already good to go so I'll just walk you through that process here uh, so basically what you'll do is you'll click the vulture.com link here and then you'll enter in your email address and your password and you'll have to deposit a $10 credit into your account so that you can run your virtual private server. Uh, to run your virtual private server it's about $2.50 or $5 a month depending on the plan that you choose. Okay. And your masternode, once it's running, will generate way more than that every day. So you don't even have to worry about the, the cost there. So anyways, uh, now you're going to uh, sign up. You'll have your $10 deposited into Vulture. And then you'll navigate to the Servers tab on the left-hand side. Okay, And as you can see here, I have screenshots of this whole process within the document as well. So you'll click Servers. You'll go Instances. And then deploy new server on the right side here then you'll scroll down and you'll click 64-bit operating system you'll select Ubuntu as your server and make sure you select the version 16.04 okay because that version supports all of the files uh, natively uh, the other operating system versions they don't support uh, one of the files that's used for the installation so then for your server size like I said before you can choose to do the the 250 a month or the five dollars a month um, the cheaper one does work for these master nodes but I believe you can only have two of them on your account at a time uh, because they're so cheap so so anyways for your first time just do the 250 a month and you'll and you'll be fine okay 
Uh, the next thing that you're going to do is just scroll down. It'll ask you if you want additional features, a startup script, SSH keys. Don't do any of that. You don't need it. Um, and then you can just name your server whichever you wish. You can choose your server host name and label. You can call it whatever you prefer. And when you're done, it'll say server added successfully and you'll be good to go. So now that you see this, it's installing. That's the status. When it's done, it'll say ready, okay, in green print. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to configure our virtual private server. And we can do that by downloading PuTTY. Uh, PuTTY is basically um, a remote shell client that, uh, that we're going to use so we can do our configuration, okay? And I have the link to PuTTY and a screenshot of, of all of that here. So you can just download that. And then you're going to want to get your IP address, okay, of your virtual private server. Now, if you go into Vulture and you go to Manage Server, it will look exactly like my screen on the left here. And you'll just copy the IP address. And I have PuTTY up right now. So I'm just going to open that. And we're going to say yes. Don't worry about that. Just add the host key we're going to use root as our password okay and then we're just gonna copy the password by clicking here and we're gonna click back into our putty session and then we're gonna right click our mouse and press enter and that pastes the password data from the vulture website into the putty session so now that we've done this we want to copy a specific command which is this one here and this downloads the special script that we need to auto install all of the data for the uh, masternode okay so it downloads all the wallet files it downloads all the updates for the operating system and everything like that so we're just going to download that file and now it's good to go and I'll just maximize this so you guys get a good look at what's going on and then what we want to do is we just want to execute this script and we can do that by typing sh and then right clicking and that will execute the script and you can see that is also within the word document on the right hand side so you can follow that as well and uh, all of the details are there there's screenshots that show exactly what I'm doing right now so the next thing that we're gonna want to do is just enter and run this command and it's going to update the whole operating system I spent like all morning on the script <laughs> and it works really good now so so it should be uh, it should be pretty easy to set up so this process on the right hand side basically covers all those details as well and now we're going to wait until this prompts us it's gonna prompt us to press uh, Y and then enter uh, several times to agree to the updating process and then it's going to ask us for our transaction ID our masternode gen key and our index ID which we have back up here okay guys that will be sorry this data right here so we're gonna copy uh, each one of these pieces of data into this script afterwards okay so I'll just come back once this is all done and then we'll proceed to do the finishing steps okay guys so now we're back and we can copy over our some of our details here so it says enter an RPC username at the bottom of this okay so now we can use whichever username we want I'm gonna call it TRG is boss 1221 and I'm going to enter that as my username the password it has to be something different so I'll say um, beer for days is gonna be my password okay and you don't need to remember these guys you just pop them in and you're on your way now we need the global IP of our um, VPS okay and that is right here because we copied it earlier right so now we can just click in here right click it and enter that now it's asking us for our masternode gen key. Whoa, this is a pretty smart script, I guess. So 
<laughs> we're going to copy over the master node gen key and then paste that in there as well. And it's asking us for an alias. So what do we want to name our master node? Well, we'll just call it call it YouTube-MN and we'll enter that. And now it's asking us for our transaction ID. And we have that because we copied that earlier. So we'll paste that in there, enter that. And now it's asking for the index ID, which is simply just zero. So we'll enter that and that's it. It's done. Okay. So uh, if we leave the, uh, read the last comments here, it says, okay, it looks like you are all set. Let's start up the daemon. And then at the bottom here, it says Dixie coin server starting. Okay. And that's it. So, so we've done all of these steps and we're just going to scroll down here and make sure we're at the last part and here we go Dixie coin server starting it worked that's it you're all set now we can move on to the final steps okay the final steps are we just need to run the master node from our local wallet so basically all we have to do here is just close our wallet now that we've updated all of our files and then we need to restart our wallet Okay guys, so now we have our wallet open and we're ready to go. Now if we go to the tools section and we jump into the debug console, we just want to type in masternode start dash many. Okay, and then it'll say right here status and then our alias YouTube masternode result successful. So it successfully started our masternode. Okay. And now if we go over to the masternodes tab, the times will look a little funky. Give it about an hour, two hours, and then they will look prop, uh, proper. And you'll receive a reward um, approximately within about 15 to 36 hours because the masternode network needs to identify that your wallet is reliable in regards to its collateral. Okay, guys, so uh, if this helped you out, if this guide really saved you some time, uh, leave a comment in the comment section so that the rest of the viewers know that this saved you some time, right? Because who knows how much time this could save everybody else. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I really hope this helped you guys out, and I will catch you guys in the next one.